So this video is going to accompany the one I made for Excel 2011 on the Mac. This is for Excel 2010 for Windows. And again what I'm doing is I'm taking a standard curve which we've generated from a serial dilution. Uh, so we're diluting concentrations in milligrams per milliliter and absorbances I've previously obtained from those concentrations by placing those samples in the spectrophotometer. We're going to use that information to make a standard curve with a graph and a line of best fit and then from that standard curve we're going to actually then be able to calculate the concentration of an unknown sample if we can at least obtain the absorbance of that unknown sample. So again all I've done listed my tubes one through five for my serial dilutions that will be my concentrations in milligrams per milliliter and my absorbances. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the ribbon and choose insert and I'm going to put a scatter plot into this sheet. So I'm going to click scatter and it's just going to be this first selection here, scatter with only markers. Okay, and that auto populates with a particular scatter plot. Now, Excel has not populated it with the correct data, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete the legend here, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose select data. That's going to bring up this. I'm actually going to remove my series that Excel has already provided me, and I'm going to choose to add a new series and now it needs the X and Y values. So I don't care about the series name, but I'm going to go to select X values, and for the X values, I'm gonna select B2 through B6. Click this tab again, and that'll bring this back up, and then for Y values, it's gonna be C2 through C6. Okay, and then I'm just gonna click OK, and click OK. So right now, my graph will display that, but those of you who have watched my previous videos know that I don't really care much for grid lines. So I'm going to format a couple of things on my graph here. The first will be to remove these grid lines. So I'm going to right click and choose format grid lines. And I'm going to choose no line. Close. And now I need to do a little bit of manipulation with the X and Y axis. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the Y axis and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to format axis. Okay, so the axis options. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a fixed value for my minimum value on this axis, and it's going to be zero. So I'll choose that. I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the x-axis. Format axis by right-clicking and choosing format axis. And for axis options for my minimum, I'm going to again select zero as my minimum. Close. Okay, and now the next thing I need to actually do is add in titles for these two axes and for my graph. So I'm going to go to Layout, and I'm going to choose Chart Title, Centered and Overlay Title. And I'm going to do Concentration versus Absorbance. And I'm actually going to change this title from Overlay uh, to where it is above the chart and that way we won't have to worry about it laying over our data. Now I need to give titles to my axes, so I'm going to come up here and choose axes titles from the, the ribbon. Primary horizontal axis title, title below axis, and this is going to be my concentration in milligrams per milliliter. Okay, so there's that axis. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for my vertical axis. I'm going to do a rotated title, and this is going to be absorbance. Okay, so the way that this is set up right now is, if I move my graph down just a little bit so it's not blocking these, if I type in values here, let's say I have a hypothetical serial dilution where I dilute it by half every time and then I have absorbances that correspond to each of those, then my graph is going to display those absorbances and those concentrations as points. But I also want to add a trend line. So I'm going to select my data points, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose add trend line. 
That gives me a linear trend line. Now I'm going to choose line color, um, and it's going to be automatic. And then I'm going to increase the size of the line, or the width, to 1.5, just to make it a little more pronounced. Okay, Solid line, and I'm actually going to make it red. So in line color, I choose solid line, and I'm going to choose red. That gives me a red trend line with my data points. And this is just a really good way to show the line of best fit based on the concentrations and absorbances that you acquire. But this isn't what the question was asked. The question that was asked was, how do I take this information and then get the concentration for an unknown sample? So I'm going to type in unknown absorbance here. I'm going to merge these cells. And then down here, I'm going to do unknown concentration in milligrams per milliliter. Okay, and again, I'm going to merge these cells, merge and center, and we're going to wrap the text. Okay. All right. So, now what I want to be able to do is type in an absorbance for my unknown sample and have the output here be the concentration of that unknown based on that absorbance. So, the formula we're going to use is a value called trend. So, you type in equals trend, open parentheses, and then you select these values here for your x axis. So, your B2 to B6 will be your first values. Then, you're going to select your y axis values, that is C2 to C6. And then finally, the new X is going to be your unknown absorbance, so the cell that contains that, and you close. Okay, now this gives me an error for the value because I don't have anything here. The other thing that's kind of confusing about this formula is initially the formula said that these first values were supposed to be our Y values, but if you type in these Y values and then choose the X values for the second set of values, it will actually give you the incorrect output for your unknown absorbance. So because these are our X values and these are our X values, we flip-flop them. So our X values come for the first ones for our trend, and then our Y values come for the second. And that final value is here. So if I type something into my unknown absorbance, let's say that it came out to be 0.32, now I've got something in my unknown concentration. I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here first, and then um, we're going to come back and we're going to clean up the formula in here so that it will be where we need it to be uh, if we don't have anything inputted for unknown absorbance. And finally, I'm going to show you that no matter what we type in here and what we type in here, we'll always come out with the answer that we need to come out with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to format cells Okay, and I'm going to make it to where, when it finally opens, um, that is a number, and I'm only going to have two decimal places. Okay, so there's my concentration. Okay, so when I delete this, it gives me that value message, basically stating that there's a value missing, and that's an error. So to correct this, and it not display anything, if I don't have anything inputted for my unknown, I'm going to type in a special formula called if error. And basically what if error says is if this particular formula comes out with an error, what should the cell display? So I'm going to put comma, and whatever's after this comma is what the cell will display. And I'm going to do empty quotations. So now it doesn't display anything. But if I type in 0 0.32, voila, again it shows my unknown concentration. So let me delete this, and I'm going to delete all of these values and show you that no matter what I plug in, it will still generate the same kind of thing. So, and here's my new serial dilution. Okay, and then for my values, let's say it's 0 0.7, 0 0.32, 0 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.38, 0 0.39, 0 0.40, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 
0 0.2, 0 0.07, and 0 0.05. Okay, then I come over here to my unknown absorbance, and let's say I pick um, an absorbance that's somewhere between 2.5 and 5, so 0 0.07 and 0 0.2. Let's say I just pick 0 0.1. 2.93, which does fall between 2.5 and 5. So I'm going to delete everything except for the formula in this space here. And this is the way I will save this file and make it available to you guys. But that's basically it. That's all there is to it. So that gives you a graph that is, plots the standard curve, the line of best fit, and then also allows you to calculate your unknown concentration if you obtain absorbance.